tablets. Okay, today we're going to be learning the second method on how to solve systems of equations. Yesterday we solved it by graphing. These next two methods that I'm going to teach you do not involve any graphing, which some of you will be happy about. This method is called substitution. Now here's the, sad, the bad news. It's going to bring up how to, you're going to have to be able to bring back your solving equation skills. Okay, some of you, I don't know if you got it the first time, so you may have to go back into chapter three video links. They're on School Fusion and just kind of review those solving, equa solving equation skills, okay? Um, this method is called substitution. You'll see why very soon. Um, here are the steps. Here's what you got to do. You have to first look for an equation, one of your two equations, that has that is solved for either x or y, that is so, where, where either x or y are, on, are alone on the left side of the equal sign, okay? Which in this situation, do we have that covered? Yeah, we already have y solved for y, okay? Here's what happens. Pay very close attention to what I'm about to do here. This 4 x, negative 4x plus 8 is y. That, that's what y equals. y equals this expression right here, negative 4x plus 8. So what doesn't that mean? Like if they're equivalent, if they're equivalent, equal, then we can replace y with negative 4x plus 8 in any other equation where there's y. Okay? So that's what our goal is. We're, it's called substitution. We're going to substitute in place of y. We're going to sub in this negative 4x plus 8. That way we have an equation with only x's involved. So we are replacing or substituting this y with negative 4x plus 8. So we now have an equation that, that looks like this. Negative 4x plus 8 equals x plus 7. And so now we have an equation with two variables. I mean, I'm sorry, with one variable that we can solve. So let's go back to thinking about how we solve this. I'm going to draw a line where the equal sign is like we used to do. Our x's are on opposite sides of the equal sign, so I have to do opposite operations to get them together. So I either need to add 4x to both sides, or I need to subtract x from both sides. Add 4x. It's probably going to be the easier way to go, that way we leave the x term positive. So we're going to add 4x to both sides. So we get 8 equals 4x plus x, 5x. Bring down our 7. So we have 8 equals 5x plus 7. Now we're going to go ahead and get the 7 to the other side. We're going to subtract 7 from both sides. We get 8 minus 7 gives us 1. So 1 equals 5x. Divide both sides by 5. Now here's the deal. We're going to leave these in fraction form. x is 1 fifth. We're going to leave it as a fraction. The only exception to that rule is if at the beginning it started as decimals. Then you can end in decimals. But otherwise you have to leave them in fractions. So x is one fifth. So now we know what x is. And I want you to remember back to what the concept, what this concept is. is if both of these equations are aligned and we want to know where they cross. So this gives us our x coordinate where they cross. So this gives us our x value which is one fifth. We now need to find out what our y value is. Okay? So here's what you do. Once you get x, once you get one of the variables, you take that variable, or you take that answer, you take this right here, one fifth for x, and you go plug it back into one of these two equations up top. You plug one fifth in for x, and that will help you to get y. When you're plugging it back into one of your equations, you want to pick the easier of the two equations. Which equation, equation looks easier to plug in stuff into? That one right there, right? So we're going to take one-fifth and we're going to put it in right here. So we're going to have y equals, in place of x, we're going to put one-fifth plus seven. So what is y equal? Seven and one-fifth. We're going to leave it as a fraction. And so that is the coordinate point in which those two lines cross at one fifth and seven and one fifth. No graphing. Besides that, could you imagine graphing these two and having the, the solution be one fifth and seven and one fifth? How would you be able to tell where they graphed? You know, you'd have to guess. So 
That's why we need methods other than graphing to solve these. Now, the next one isn't quite set up for you because you don't have one of the equations solved for x or y, so we have to do that. So looking at example two, we don't have x or y solved for on either one of these equations. So here's what you have to look for. You have to look for a variable that's almost by itself. You want to look for a variable that doesn't have a number with it. So that second one, okay, it's going to be pretty easy to get y by itself because there's only one step. Okay, there's only one step. What is that step that we have to do? Yes, we add 6x to both sides. So we get rid of those 6x's. We bring down our y, so we get y equals 6x minus 7. So now we have an equation solved for y. So we know that anywhere where y is on the other equation, we can put in 6x minus 7. We can substitute it in. So that's what we do next. <coughs> we take this right here, and we plug it in right up here for y. In place of y, we're going to put, put that expression. So then what we do is we get three parentheses, and that's where we plug in the 6x minus 7, and then plus 2x equals 4. So I took this equation right here, but in place of y, I put 6x minus 7 because that's what y is. So now we have this equation to solve. This is why I said you have to go back and refresh your memories on solving equations. What is the first thing that we need to do on this? Parentheses, we're going to do the distributive property. So 3 times 6x is 18x. 3 times negative.
which is 2 over 4. What's 2 over 4 reduced to? 1 half. And again, if the fraction work confused you, I, you know, go back and watch the videos on how to add fractions. So, you know, you should be able to do that. Your calculator <laughs> will do it also. But that's your solution. That's where those two lines intersect. All right? With the front side. Oh gosh. All right. Are these other two just like it? Just well, it's okay. We're only going to do this first one, Good. so we don't have time for that. Um, your school is planning to bring 193 people to a competition at another school. There are eight drivers available in two types of vehicles. We got school buses and minivans. The school buses seat 51 people each, and the minivans seat eight people each. How many buses and minivans will be needed? We have to come up with our two equations. Rather than them giving us to them, we have to come up with the two equations we're going to use. Now, we need to come up with some variables for our unknowns. What is that last question asking us? How many buses, how many minivans? Those are our two variables. Okay? We'll just use X and Y. It's easier. We'll say X is the number of buses. And we'll say Y is minivans, number of minivans. Okay? So we are going to have to write two equations. The first one is usually taking x and y and adding them into something, okay? If x is number of buses and y is number of minivans, how many vehicles are we going to be taking on this trip all together? We only have eight drivers. You can only take eight vehicles. So eight vehicles. So we know that the number of buses plus the number of minivans has to equal eight. This could be so much easier if you were to just go and solve on these buses. All right. Yes, I understand you can do this without algebra, but what I'm testing you on is can you do it with algebra. So that's what I'm trying to teach you. So I know you can't right now because I'm teaching you. <coughs> All right, the next equation is going to have to do with the number of people. Otherwise, they wouldn't give you that. They give us 193 people. We've got to do something with that. How are we transporting those 193 people? By buses and minivans. Bus and minivans. How many people will a bus hold? 51. So can I take 51 divided by 193 times... X? Sure, why not? Because if I take 51 times the number of buses, won't I get that many people that are coming on bus? Yeah. These are the people coming on bus. I'm going to add to it the people coming in a van. That's 8Y equals 193. No, not yet. These are our two equations. We've now written two equations, and we're going to use the solving systems by using substitution. We're going to use the substitution model. Well, let's think about it. Okay, which two equations? We want to get one equation solved for either x or y. Which is going to be the equation that's going to easily have us do that? The first one, x plus y equals 8. We can easily solve for a variable. x plus y equals 8. Do we want to solve for x or y? It doesn't matter. X, okay. So we're going to subtract Y. We're going to subtract Y from both sides. It's, it doesn't matter. Cancel that. We get X equals 8 minus Y. X equals 8 minus Y. So we, we messed with this equation and turned it into an equivalent ex expression. X equals 8 minus Y. Where do we put that 8 minus Y? Where do we put this? In the second. Yeah, right here in the second equation. The one that we didn't mess with is where we put it. 8 minus y. We put it right up here next to the 51. That's where our 8 minus y is going to go. All right, so our equation is going to look, like look like this. 51 parentheses. And then you've got to plug in your 8 minus y. <coughs> plus 8y equals 193. Where? In between your 8 and y. That's what minus. he said, but you got it right there in parentheses. Yeah, this is just 8y. That's the part of the equation. That's this. Oh, okay. So now we've solved this equation. We do our distributive property. What's 51 times 8? 408. Oh, right? 408 minus 51y plus 8y equals 193. 
We've got to combine our y terms. We have negative 51 and positive 8. What do those combine to get? These right here. Are they going to be positive or negative? Negative. And then the difference of 51 and 8? 43. Minus 43y equals 193. We gotta get the y term by itself, so we're gonna subtract 408 from both sides. We get negative 43y equals 193 minus 408. 215, thank you. And it's negative. Negative 215. And then divide both sides by negative 43. Five. Five. So we need five minivans. So we need, yeah, exactly. We need, Which means we need three buses. Very good, Taylor. We have y equals minivan, so this tells us we need five minivans. You got to do simple math like that. And then we know we were taking eight altogether, so that leaves room for three buses. Make it hard to us the out all right, thank you for listening.